Here are some quick tips and solutions for troubleshooting problems with your API. As with the visual debugging video, we'll have the most common issues linked with their timestamps in the description. Let's start debugging so you can get back to the fun stuff. One issue that often happens when setting up the URLs for list and detail pages is that the variables don't match. Since these two requests are related, make sure that they share the same variable. You can check that in the selected data under name. When creating a new request, Bravo predefines a variable name. If you change that name, make sure that you change it in both places. If this didn't solve your issue, but you feel like variables might still be the cause, then I would encourage you to check out my variable video. There I go into much more detail about variables in their specific cases and how you can best use them. A related issue is that your variable might be set up correctly, but you're using it wrong inside of the request URL. This could happen if you try to follow a tutorial for one database provider using a different one. Just because Airtable is using that URL structure doesn't mean that your API uses the same one. If you're not sure about the structure of the URLs that your API expects, then it's best to check the documentation. There you can find at least a sample request where you can base yours off. You can't understand what all of the stuff inside of the API documentation means, then I would recommend the video that I did on specifically reading API documentation and all the things around that. It's pretty easy to spot if the issue you're running into is a missing authentication key. Most likely you got the status code 401 back, which means that the request was unauthorized. This can be quickly fixed by taking a look at the API documentation, where you'll find a section about authentication or authorization. In there, you can either already find the key that you need or find an explanation on how to retrieve it. For example, you might have to sign up to the provider in order to use their API. Additionally, check for the right format of the key. In Airtable, for example, you could be missing the word bearer. Wrong test values refers to the section test values inside of Bravo's data library. Here you can set values for the variables you used in the request URL. If you don't get the expected result inside of the Bravo data library, you might have to change those. This is the Airtable request for a detail page. When we hit send, our variable record ID is replaced by the value we have in the test value section. If the test value is a record ID that exists in this table, the API returns exactly that record. However, if it's a record ID that does not exist, we get an error. What is happening if your API returns a list of elements, but in Bravo you can't bind it as a list? In the received data section of the data library, you might have already noticed these drop-down menus where you can either select a number or all. Bravo only recognizes the array that your API returns if you select the option all. The numbers can be understood as the index of the array. For example, if you choose zero, only the first element will be used. You can use the option all only once per request. If you can select all in the array that you want, check where all is already in use. Then change that to a number to unlock the option for your array. You receive data inside of the data library, but once you get to the binding part, you can not select it. This is an easy fix. In the data library, you have to check every single property that you want to use in the binding part. Make sure that all of the checkboxes inside of the received data are enabled for all of the properties that you want to use. You might find that the API that you're using does not accept the body you sent with the request. This could happen, for example, if you use a POST request to add data to your database. Check inside of the API documentation if you're using the correct format. If you're using JSON, you can also use a JSON validator online. The response that you're getting from your request is not interpreted by Bravo. This mainly happens if you're using a custom API or maybe something similar like an Integromat webhook response. The response needs to be in a certain format in order for Bravo to understand what to do with it. I have linked a sample response body that works with Bravo in the description below. You can check it out and bring your data in the same format. Let's finish off with some general tips. Next to the received and selected data inside of your data collection, you find the debug section. Inside of it, you find more information about the request that you sent as well as the response that you got. 
If you've been using Postman or Hopscotch, you'll love this feature. One last tip would be to ask for help properly. If you have an issue that is related to the API, then ask in their respective forums. They are experts in their tool and will give you an answer quickly, while in the Bravo community, someone would have to research first. Cases where the issue could lie in the API and not in Bravo could be the following. Inside of Bravo's request section, you get a response code different from 200. 200 means okay, the rest could hint to an issue with the API. Or you're receiving data from your response, but it's not what you expected. For example, because you used the wrong filters. I really hope this video can help you fix the issues that you might have with your API. Thank you for watching and I'll see you for a new episode of Build It With Jonas next Tuesday. Bye.